Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Steve McLaughlin from Epon Technologies. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Steve McLaughlin, the head of data at Epon Technologies. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Steve, hello and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to be for you to be here. I'm excited to see you in person at EDW. Just a few short weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. I can't believe we're in person again for this conference. It's been a while. Oh. It's so much better. It's so much fun. I love it right? so much. It's like yeah. my favorite time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> so tell me, you are the head of data at Epon Technologies. So tell me about Epon Technologies. What is it? What is the company? And what do sure. they do? Yeah. So uh, Epon is a, a business transformation consulting firm. Um, mm -hmm. And we do that through really four different avenues, three technical and one more strategic. And those three technical avenues are data, of course. That's why I'm here big data geek, uh, product engineering, which is more like custom application development, mm -hmm. um, and uh, cloud infrastructure. So uh, mm. we have a lot of DevOps and, and cloud developers. And then kind of the glue that holds all of that together is our strategy and product practice. Um, so we typically come in all the way from early discovery. We love getting to know a business and saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know, what is it you're trying to do? Before you even think about technology, what are you trying to do? What, what things are you trying to transform about your business? And then how can we enable that? And then our technical teams, we hire experts who can hit the ground running and say, okay, great. You know, you're, you're trying to, to have a faster time to market. So we're going to help you move to the cloud in whatever ways and migrate off your old infrastructure and, you know, so on and so forth. So it's a lot of fun. I have loved ah, it. I love that. So, so tell me then, um, what do you do for Epon Technologies as the head of data? You know, what's your typical work week look like? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and I will say we do a lot of empathy interviews. So as we're getting to know businesses, we do interviews. And one of my colleagues introduced this concept of explain what you do without using your title. And that was one of those moments for me. I was like, wow, people's titles rarely have anything to do with what they actually do on the day to day, mm -hmm. does it? So, right. you know, really, I think there's three things that, that my job entails. And the first is um, overseeing delivery. So, you know, mm -hmm. all projects, ultimately, they roll up to me. So if, if a client's unhappy or you know, more often than not, if a client's really happy, that escalates <laughs> up to me and I get to, you know, get, get to nice. really revel in and, and enjoy that. Um, but ultimately, I oversee delivery, whatever that might look like, if we need a little extra lift here or, you know, um, whatever, mm -hmm. I can kind of jump in and, and help solve that. Uh, this, the second piece is I oversee all the people management on the practice. So all mm -hmm. of the managers report up to me and, and sort of everyone's career paths and growth, you know, that all sort of rolls up to me. And then finally, the, the strategy of the practice, right? What are the things we're going to focus on as we are learning in the marketplace and, and things are changing all the time? What are we going to do? What are we going to focus on? What partnerships are we going to go after? And, uh, and how are we going to stay competitive that way? So that's really kind of my high level, you know, ideal day to day. In reality, you wind up being kind of chief firefighter. And that's a lot of fun. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so um so, so look, let me ask a little bit more too, you know, you have a, you know, cool department or organization developed or dedicated to data, you know, mm -hmm. who works closely with the tech teams. How does that work? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, by and large, our data practice is very technical. So it's a lot of data engineers and data architects. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and then we kind of partner with our strategists to help lay out a vision, lay out roadmaps for organizations. But ultimately, you know, we don't want to do, there's really two things we don't want to do. And sometimes I yeah. think defining who you are by what you're not is beneficial. The first thing we don't want to do is just hand over PowerPoint decks and be like, okay, we're done. Right. We're consultants yeah. and here's your PowerPoint deck. Okay. That's part of it, you know, developing a strategy, nor do we want to be, and, and you know, uh, the traditional kind of commoditized staffing, where it's like, how many developers do you need? Okay, three developers, great, we're going to do that. We really take this holistic, we call it a team in a box. The idea mm. is, hey, they're one of your teams and they're holistic and they're going to come in and solve this. And our sort of unofficial motto is from, from discovery to delivery. So the idea mm. is we've got professionals at every stage of a project life cycle who can help envision it, help you articulate what the business needs and why, help you roadmap that out and scope what needs to be done. And then a team of technical experts to actually do that. So at the end of that, you have a, a cohesive transformation. We've put metrics around it, success measures to make sure that we've done that. Uh, so that's what I love about it is I get to be a part of the entire process. Um, and and it's, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, you really can see yeah. tangible results. And we start there, right? We start with what, what would make this successful? How are we going to prove that we've done what we've set out to do? And so that's right. kind of step one is what are the success metrics? Yeah, I love it. Very important to establish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, we're in the world of data governance, right? A lot of those things... Right? don't work sometimes and sometimes people <laughs> jump in before they're ready and, you know yeah. when it works it's amazing and when it doesn't work people right. are kind of like yep that's how it goes <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me steve you know is, is this when you were very young you know say six years old you know was this the dream i'm going to be the head of data at Yukon technologies and, and manage this <laughs> massive organization and team Oh, definitely not. No, I, I was pretty <laughs> sure I was going to be a Jedi when I was six. I think oh, I that was that. the goal. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe a fighter pilot. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, I think like a lot of folks in data, I probably had a pretty circuitous route to where I'm at. Um, yeah. Maybe that's my generation and, and kind of older. I think younger people, people know what data is now and they're excited about right. it. But I, yeah. I didn't even know what data meant when I was a kid. Um, so, you know, I, I have an interesting way I got into it. And I think this is relevant to consulting since I'm in consulting now. I was in a band and I put off college mm -hmm. and we were touring. Mm -hmm. So we were touring the country playing music. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you, know, you play? We were, I played guitar and I sang, nice. if you can believe it. I'm, you know, I can, I, I, it, yeah. I can kind of carry a tune, but not so much anymore. I'm a little out of practice. So <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you're not going to get to hear me sing today. Uh, but, and, and so you, you learn so much then. I was booking tours. I was mm -hmm. dealing with things as they came up, you know, mm -hmm. um, constantly pivoting, constantly repairing the van. You know, it's not, we weren't, we weren't making so much money that our van was nice. <laughs> okay, there, we yeah. had a van that was not good. Yeah. Yeah, that was, <laughs> and I learned a lot about automobile repair in those days, <laughs> but you learn a lot about things that, that kind of impact you later. So anyways, after about two years of that, we were kind of like, you know, we're like, doing okay, but we're not going to live, we're not going to be the Rolling Stones, right? So yeah. we kind of need to figure out what we're going to do. And I'd always liked computers. So I got into software development, right? And at the yeah. time that was kind of new and exciting. Sure. People were, you know, the web was brand new. In fact, yeah. I remember, you know, we were using MapQuest and Atlas to do our tours, you know, long before any of that existed. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got into software development and my first ever job was doing practice management software for like hospitals and, and doctor's mm. offices. And then I got this project that came down from our chief operating officer. And he said, they're asking for patient demographics. Can you build me a data queue? And I was like, I don't even know what that means. I've never written a line of SQL in my life. I don't know <laughs> what a cube is, <laughs> you know? And so I was yeah. like, sure, I'll give it a shot. And I think after a couple of weeks, I remember distinctly working on it and kind of seeing the results and having this epiphany where I was like, whoa, this is actually like the most important thing that companies could probably be doing right now. And I, you know, I didn't have the words for it or the vocabulary yeah. for it that I have now, but I remember that feeling of like, there's so much information and insight that can be gleaned from this. Right. But software development, I love it. To all my friends who are software developers, it's awesome. But it's kind of just moving and manipulating data, right? Like at the end of the day, I, I just was like, this is it. This is so cool. 
So shortly thereafter, I found myself working for a very small consulting firm out here on the East Coast. And I worked with Dr. Peter Aiken. So just yeah. learned so much so fast yeah. working with Peter. But finally, yeah. like all those concepts that I thought were really cool had voice. And yeah, uh, yeah just like drank from the fire hose. And if you know Peter, he's always willing to explain something. Yes. He's always willing to teach. Uh, so I feel <laughs> very fortunate that I got that that education with him. So haven't looked back since. Both consulting and data, my two loves. So there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Uh, we, yeah, it, I interviewed Peter. Of course, I knew Peter for a long time, but he was one of the first yeah. guests on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. He's been doing a webinar series with us longer oh, than anybody I know. else. <laughs> Many years ago, I helped him. I would introduce him on those webinars. It was a long yeah. time ago. Long, long time ago. <laughs> so... So, um, so what was your biggest lesson so far in your career as you've gone through these this journey into yeah. data? Yeah, that, that's a good, that's a great question. I, I remember, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, and I think this is still a problem people talk about all the time. You know, these these heady concepts that data people get don't translate as well, right? So mm -hmm. I, I kind of touched on, hey, sometimes data governance doesn't stick. And I, I remember being frustrated with that. I remember delivering a project to an unnamed government agency. And it was, hey, this is what we think you need to do for data governance. And one of the people in the room had his feet on the table and fell asleep. And I'm like, oh boy, this is going nowhere. Yeah. But then I, I, I was on this project with this wonderful woman named Sarah Willivit. Um, and she had devised this way to really communicate the benefits of things down to a very granular level. She had found a way to truly articulate value, not just kind of say it and say, hey, this is valuable. And in these kind of intangible ways, she had found an amazing way to say, no, if we don't do this, this is what it's costing us. And if we do this, this is what we're gonna save or earn or gain for every little project. That's where she started and it, it changed my whole philosophy on my approach to data management, data governance. Uh, it, it really, to me, was one of those just aha moments of like, wow, this is not just read it off a of PowerPoint and right. execute. This is about change management and it's about relationships and it's about proving this out and, and kind of grassroots you know, uh, growth for these programs. So to me that I, I still think back to that project all these years back and I'm like, that's my, that's my guiding light. Are we doing that? Have we, have we, are we just delivering a PowerPoint or have we really showed people what this is doing for them? And if we're not, then it's not going to work. Yeah. Oh, and I love that story. Uh, it's so true, right? Because data isn't just numbers, right? It's just, right. it's, you know, you, you really have to communicate. You have to have the whole yeah. package. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's hard to do. And I think it's hard to really articulate the value again i think most data people like we just kind of get it intrinsically and we can say all day long this is yeah. really valuable this is worth doing it's about people process technology and kind of those platitudes that we fall back on because they do ring true for us but yeah. there's so much more to to actually getting that inside other people's heads but there's probably an entire you know phd in psychology for getting people to do data governance that would be interesting but <laughs> I think that would be a good study. I think we should That's fund right. that. Yeah, let's do it. You, you heard it here first. Dataversity presents. <laughs> uh, I love Is there something that you did to hone that skill further? Yeah, good question. Um, I, I think that just kind of comes par for the course with consulting. Mm -hmm. You really kind of wind up learning what makes people tick and getting to know different personalities and, and you start to see some patterns emerging. Um, I remember, you know, not long after that project, learning about things like Myers-Briggs and those types of things that I don't fully ascribe to all the time, I, but, but they're really helpful as an exercise to be like, okay, yeah. let me think about what Shannon needs to hear to make sure that <laughs> yeah. she supports this as opposed to Peter. What does Peter need right. to hear to, to really support this? And that is a thing I think about a lot, and, you know, as I'm um, helping my clients often internally sell many of these capabilities or concepts, you know, you have to really think about what, what's in it for people and how do they need to be communicated with and how do you kind of manage that relationship and communication? So, yeah. um, yeah, I think that's one of those just over the years I've gotten better at it and, uh, something I think a lot about, uh, you know, I try to be really intentional about that thought process. I love that. 
Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. So tell me, Steve, you know, so having worked with data for for a while, you know, and as and having worked with Peter, even, you know, what is your definition of data and how do you work with it? We've kind of talked about that a little bit, but maybe. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, it's one I think about a lot. And, and philosophically, I think, you know, you can you can get uh, as as deep, I guess, as you really want to. But to me, I think 90 percent of businesses now are their data. I, I just mm -hmm. think that's the way it's it's. Maybe it's a little bit of like a ship of Theseus, you know, like people can leave, but the business doesn't change or <laughs> new markets can be entered. But fundamentally, what is a business besides all of their collection of data in its entirety? Mm -hmm. um, and that that to me is actually pretty like eye opening to think about. And, e you know, even down to a lawn care business, like how do you do it? How do you maintain your equipment? Who are your customers? How are you marketing? It just is the business now. I, yeah. I really believe that. Um, yeah. So, you know, without getting into, hey, data is information, I'll, I'll spare our listeners that because they probably have their own ideas. But to me, I'm like, businesses are data now. They are. And not everyone manages it well. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too heady, like uh, too no, lofty to, to get into. But I'm like, yeah, maybe just everything is actually data now in our lives. It really is, right? <laughs> it's, I don't I think there's much we can't quantify anymore. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, and I assume that you use it a lot in your own business as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, we try to make data driven decisions and, and we are a relatively small business. So we have a lot of the same pains as our customers in some ways. And of course, in other ways, we're far more advanced. Um, mm -hmm. And I get the benefit being in consulting. I see so many organizations, right? I, I get to see um, sort of the 30,000 foot view. And my favorite thing is every single client, I think I've probably ever had come at me with like, man, we've got these problems. You won't believe and by the end of their explanation, I'm like, you have the problems that everybody has. This mm -hmm. is pretty widespread. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a handful of organizations who have really, you know, raised the bar or, or, you know, really disrupted the way things are being done. But those companies aren't coming into consulting firms and probably aren't listening to podcasts on how to do things better. And I think that's 95% of organizations are just not there. And many of the problems are really common. Yeah, I we hear a lot of the same problems as well all the time. Sure, that people are trying to solve in our webinars and just yeah. general people reaching out. <laughs> we need help with. Yeah, yeah. and you know the, mm -hmm. the problems. I mean, there's a lot of solutions out there. There's a lot of ways to approach it, and this is where kind of coming back to what I was saying earlier. I think in many cases, you know, we kind of know how to fix those problems, but the mm -hmm. challenge is bringing people along, getting people to see that, getting people to understand it. And I know how frustrating that is for data people out there in their organizations who are like, I know, I'm telling you, we got to do this. I know this. I can see the risks. I can see the mm -hmm. benefits of doing this. I can see the risks for not doing this. But so much of that, that I think is missing from our practice in a lot of cases is that change management, that relationship building. Yeah. And, you know, when clients now ask me, hey, who should I put in for a data governance role? I'm like, find the most boisterous, like <laughs> affable, friendly person you can find who's also yeah. bullheaded and is not going to take no for an answer, but is going to do it in such a way that you're like, this person is my best friend and they're giving me some some hard advice because I think you've got to have that kind of personality now to, to get that yeah. to stick. Yeah, I think that's some great advice. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's so true. <laughs> I, I've seen, you know, those personalities work really well in data governance roles and as leads. Of oh, data yeah. Governance. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you'll see them at data diversity. A, a lot of yeah. times the people who are talking about where they've seen success, you're like, oh, yeah, I know how you, I know how you're seeing success. Yeah. You got yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, um, so do you see uh, the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data 
increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Oh, that's a great question. I love that. I love getting into predictions. <laughs> um, I think I think we'll see uh, new jobs emerging. Um, mm -hmm. I think everyone wants in on the AI pie right now. I think we will reach the plateau of productivity for that, you know, once the yeah. hype kind of dies down, but it is useful. It is being used right now. It's amazing. Yeah. And people are forging ahead full steam without, you know, kind of doing some of the good foundational work, of course. So right. I do think there's going to be a place for data management. I think some of the more technical roles may be taken over by low code, no code, you know, AI driven solutions. I don't think it's ever going to fully go away. I think it's just going to see a little bit of a shift and abstract upwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. What I do think we will see different is, and hey, I already said it, data is the business. I think every role increasingly is going to be more data centric, more data driven, you know, more um, reliant on data. And so I hate to use the term data literacy because I think it puts people defensive, but I think every yeah. job out there is going to need to be raising the bar on data literacy. And so I do think we're going to see an increase in that regard. There might not be new roles or different roles, but they're going to shift to where there's going to be a much more heavy reliance on data. And that has to come with understanding. So I think it's a bright future for data. Right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree with anything you say. I, I think we're seeing the same thing. You know, like you say, we've seen so many companies try to stand up uh, AI and machine learning and right. went, oh, whoops, we forgot to prep the data. Oh, whoops, we need a data model. Oh, whoops, like, so, oh, we yeah. need to hire somebody who knows how to build data models. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's we're right. seeing a lot that's of right. the, yeah, which is great, which is amazing. Right. Yeah, we've seen it create jobs and create importance around data governance even yeah i think it Especially. will and mm -hmm. i mean even uh, internally you know as we were increasingly using ai tools you mm -hmm. know i kind of had that wake up in the middle of the night moment i'm like oh my gosh we don't actually have a an ai policy you know this was a couple of weeks ago that's oh, now solved mm -hmm. but i i kind of had that like <laughs> oh my god that's just like slipped under the radar we got so yeah. excited about all this stuff but we right. don't you know so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so so I do think there's everyone's so excited. We're moving fast, and that's great. And you have to be careful, right? Yeah, yeah. The other hot topic coming up is ethics, right? A, oh, sure. Especially around AI. Absolutely, so, data ethics. Yeah. So, oh, love it. So, what advice then would you give to people who are looking to get into a career in data management? Oh, that's a great question. I, I really think if you understand the, the basics of mm -hmm. data management, and there are so many wonderful books and resources out there. I have multiple copies of the Dimbach in my house. Robert Siner's books are so good. You can learn the how. But yeah. I, as I already mentioned before, I really think there's a huge piece on learning how change management works at an organization, mm -hmm. learning how to form those relationships and being really good at pushing your ideas in a way that resonates with people. And that's that's harder, I think, to teach, right? But I think it's something you can improve on, something you can learn and get better at. And so I think that's, a for some people, a missing tool in the tool belt. Um, yeah. And that's my biggest piece of advice is data is the business and businesses mm -hmm. are people and their relationships. And if you want to move the needle there, you got to learn how to navigate that space. Yeah, I think that's the big life challenge, right? <laughs> always, <laughs> for always. Anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I I'm love sorry. That. I feel sorry for introverts in data management. I know there's a lot of them. I'm not an introvert at all, but <laughs> I sometimes sit back and I'm like, I bet that's really challenging to wake up and be like, okay, I got to go make relationships. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's possible. I we can do it. It's very possible. I, yeah. I've known so many introverts who are so thoughtful and caring and form great relationships. They just need to go home and be in silence for a couple hours to recharge after that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, I would be neglectful if I didn't ask, you know, if somebody wanted to uh, look up the services of Epon Technologies, how, where would they go? Yeah, great. Um, you know, number one is EponUSA.com, of course, our website. Uh, we have a, a great LinkedIn presence. We post lots and lots of blogs. We just surpassed 430 blogs, I think, on various topics. So a lot of great content out there. Uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. I try to post really regularly when I'm not totally snowed under. 
Um, and hey, I come to at least, you know, one or two day diversity events every year. So come find me and let's let's chit chat about board games. I'm a huge board game nerd. So oh, uh, I love there's that. now a little group of us that get together and, and talk about all things board gaming at, at day diversity events. So Oh, I didn't know that. How fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just to, for everybody, uh, Ifon is IPPON.com. That's right. Yep. IPPONUSA.com. <laughs> Perfect. And I will uh, get those links for me and we'll post it on the page of the podcast for everybody to, to uh, find you. Great. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, see, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.